Rockin' Cats was released for the NES in 1991. The main character is this musician cat named Willie. One day while Willie's performing at a show, the local mob boss Muggsy catches a peek at Willie's girlfriend Jill and does what any good-hearted criminal does when he wants to get laid. He kidnaps her. So it's up to you to take control of Willie and save her. Now, Muggsy's a dog and Jill's a cat, so I guess in this humanistic animal universe, crossbreeding isn't all that taboo. Anyway, the game is a pretty basic side-scroller. A bunch of Muggsy's gangster fucks are after you, and Willie's weapon of choice is an old-school punch gun. This has to be one of the most bizarre primary weapons I've ever seen in a video game. You can use it for multiple functions, mainly to punch the shit out of oncoming enemies, and you can do this in eight directions, including diagonally, but you can only fire downward while in midair. You can also use the glove to grab onto certain objects and swing yourself in circles, which you can do damage to enemies as well as propel yourself into the air as long as you let go at the right time. You can wipe out enemies if you land on them from this motion and press the A button at the same time to do a jump, but more often than not, executing this successfully is complete luck. This whole tactic of swinging around is necessary to get by a lot of spots, but it takes a little while to get used to. First off, the detection is sensitive, so you need to get the timing down pretty exact to grab on. And then while swinging, you don't want to release too soon or too late or you could end up dead. If you jump and then fire downward at the right time, you can use the glove to punch to the ground and give yourself a heightened boost. If you punch a stationary object like a trash can or fire hydrant, you'll be sent flying backwards taking out enemies behind you, but you really don't get all that much distance from it. Another ability is grabbing objects and throwing them by holding the B button and the hand of the glove will open up and catch shit that falls from the sky, but it's practically useless. You won't have enough time to catch anything because of the delay between the punch and the open glove. The only way it can work is if you know ahead of time when the objects will fall, and if that's the case, it's just as well that you simply let them fall in front of you. Your health meter consists of five hearts which can be depleted by a half a heart or a full heart depending on the enemy. Hearts that lie around throughout the game will fill your health meter. The small ones restore one heart while the big ones completely restore your health. You start off in front of a TV where you can select any of the first four stages in the order you wish by selecting channels. You can also go to the store and buy weapon upgrades with money you collect throughout the levels. You can equip any of these weapons in the pause menu at any time. There's the bomber for 100 bucks which fires off a short range explosive along with your punch. Then there's twin balls which sounds a little suggestive for a Nintendo game. They go for 300 bucks, and they travel a little further than the bombs and have a bit more of a rapid rate, but it doesn't have the lasting effect of the explosion. The hammer punch is $200, and it simply makes the regular punch gun more powerful, but you can't swing on things while it's equipped. Last but not least, the jet sneakers are $500, and they let you hover in midair for a little while. You can also buy an extra life in the stuff for 500 bucks. But you really don't need to, because you can spend a lot less than that to rack up extra lives in one of these three mini-games. For $50, you can play Roulette, where Willie spins frantically across the board and you stop him on one of the eight numbers to collect either money or extra lives. You get two spins per turn. For $25, you can play Basketball, although it's a pretty strange variation of it. You can swing from this plank or whatever and try to land in these shifting baskets, which is easier said than done. You only get two swings and the payoff isn't all that great, so I don't really ever bother with this game. A good one to rack up cash is Pipe Toss. It costs a hundred bucks, but it pays for itself once you figure it out. A line of three pipes will shift up and down on the right side, and you have to grab these balls that fall and toss them into the pipes, each giving you a different amount of money. The only way you can reach the top one is to hold up before jumping and then letting go. You keep going until either the time runs out or you've connected with eight pipes, which gives you a maximum total of $560 per turn. You start out dead broke, but after getting through one level, you should have several hundred dollars. More than enough to load up on dough from the pipe toss, which you can use to buy the items in the shop as well as spend on extra lives in the roulette game. After beating one level, you can effectively get every weapon and a shitload of extra lives for insurance after playing a bunch of these mini-games in a row. So as for the game itself, like I said, you can pick one of the first four levels in any order. The weird thing is, each time you beat a level, you save Jill and it says the end. So I guess every time you save her, she gets kidnapped again. 
Oh, they're treating the separate channels like individual programs, but it's the same shit on every channel. The graphics and animation are pretty average. The backgrounds have some detail, but are usually plagued with bland and monotonously filled colors. The soundtrack is kind of confusing. The theme of the game seems to focus on 1920s or 30s swing jazz gangsters, but the songs are kind of circusy, which a lot of people are going to crap on, but I like carnivalesque songs if they're done right, say by Mr. Bungle, but in 8-bit format, they're kind of generic and lack texture. The controls are pretty good for the most part, but like I said, grabbing onto objects with the glove isn't too forgiving with the timing. When you get a game over, you'll be given a 10-digit password with letters, numbers, and weird fucking symbols. Do they really need all this extra shit? Now, it really doesn't matter what order you choose the level, so I'm gonna go in the order they're listed, 1 through 4. The first level is Downtown Street, and it starts out with these little red things that try to jump on your back and rape you. If they latch onto you, you won't be able to jump very high at all. Keep jumping to shrug them off. Be sure to grab onto the ledges of these buildings to grab items that are up there, or to swing over this huge fucking hole in the road that the city's too cheap to fix. Later on, you'll run into a sub-boss, this huge bird that hatches out of this little egg. It lays eggs and sends them in your direction. Each shot will stun it, so jump over the eggs and punch it. It'll turn purple and get more pissed off, but all it does is move a little faster. Repeat the same strategy, and when you win, your health meter will fill up completely. Then you'll go down the sewer where you'll see Jill screaming from the inside of a train. So some kid you've never met before who's skateboarding in a sewer near an underground railroad passes by and just randomly offers you his skateboard. Wait for the gangster dogs to fire off their guns before attacking them and grab the items on top of the train. This is kinda weird, the skateboard follows you underneath. Damn, with a skateboard this smart, it makes you wonder why the kid would just hand it over. Swing yourself into this pipe and you're almost up to the boss. This sequence will play back in altered variations for each level where Jill calls you for help and Muggsy threatens you with whatever boss he's gonna sick on you. You'll find yourself on stage while this dog in a purple suit with a microphone pops out of these slots attacking you apparently with his bad vocals as the projectiles on music notes. If bad vocals were a weapon, then perhaps Muggsy should have hired Bono to be the boss of this level. That shit would be lethal. You attack him in whack-a-mole fashion as he pops down and back out again. Stand in between two holes and keep punching back and forth while jumping over the music note when you have to head over to the other side. After a few shots, three lights will fall from the ceiling, and they fall fast so keep your focus overhead so you can still slide between them. So then you save Jill, and it's happily ever after. Well, until you change the channels. But before you do, use your money to play the mini games to get some extra cash and stock up on extra lives and weapon upgrades. Channel 2 is Sky Ace. After a little while on the ground, you'll hop aboard a plane flown by someone and you'll take to the sky. Punch the bird straight ahead and jump before punching the little planes to avoid the bombs they drop. Then you'll do battle with the sub-boss, a pilot dog that's floating around in midair without any kind of apparatus. What the fuck? You mean to tell me his flapping ears are keeping him afloat? I call bullshit. He'll shift in an arc pattern above you while chucking balls at you. The green ones travel normally and the red ones will explode. Keep a safe distance from the direction he's on to avoid his balls, and then attack him with your twin ball weapon from underneath as he passes over you. Watch out though, at some point he'll decide to stop halfway and sit on you, so be ready to veer off to the side a little. Just watch your step or you'll fall off. The hammer punch is also an effective weapon against him. After killing him, hop into the back of the zeppelin. Later on you'll encounter these blue gear things that will follow your every move, so take them out and grab onto this chain and swing across to the other side. Then grab onto this little platform that spins around and you'll either sink into the large pipe or if you land in the outside ledges you can land on it and head up there for an extra life. Using the jet sneakers can help you ease down to where you want to go. Then you can slide down this pipe for a few more goodies than you would if you go down the other pipe. You'll get to the boss which is this weird ass machine with four fists sticking out of each end. Attack the center with the hammer punch from underneath and it's kinda weird cause it looks like a cat is controlling the contraption when all the enemies are dogs. A fist will drop and fire bullets or bursts of fucking air, both of which you can block with your hammer punch. Or sometimes the fist will bounce around at two different speeds. You can walk under it and keep attacking or destroy it. When all the fists are all wiped out, it'll swoop down across the entire floor except for the far left and far right. So stick to one of those sides and just keep punching until it goes down. Once again, you save Jill and Muggsy's all pissed off.